Oh, what a dog. Calm down, calm down. We're not going to hurt you. Where am I? You're in the future. Future? Oh. You travel through time about 5,000 years as part of a science experiment. Don't worry, we'll explain it all later. Where is my kids? They're all dead. What? No, don't worry. They live long and happy lives. They're just dead now. And my wife? She's dead too. Hey, hey, I mean, oh. Before we integrate you into society, we need to explain computers to you. Computer? Yes, the thing that's in front of you. You see, in 1800, Alessandro Volta was stacking alternating layers of zinc and copper on top of each other. Don't ask me why. And he discovered that when he touched this zinc and copper, it would sometimes zap it. Then he realised that if he connected a copper wire from the top of the stack to the bottom, it created a circuit and the wires would start to heat up. Later in 1830, Samuel Morse and Joseph Henry were playing around with this and they found that if you cut the wire here, and then create an anchor point here, you can create a switch and turn the circuit off and on. They also found that if you take a block of iron and then wrap copper wire around it, you get an electromagnet. And if you hook this up to the circuit, then you can turn the electromagnet off and on again. Using this circuit with a magnet that you can turn off and on, if you connect another circuit with a switch just nearby the magnet, then you can control the switch using the magnet by pulling the arm of the switch with the magnet. So, Morse and Henry had a way of controlling this circuit using this switch. Then in 1837, Claude Shannon used this to create the first logic gates. Basically, he realised that if you connect up a circuit like this, then both this switch and this switch have to be on in order for the output to be on. So this is called an AND gate. Then you realise that if you connect up a circuit like this, then this switch or this switch or both have to be closed in order for the output to be on. So this is called an OR gate. And lastly, you realise that when you connect up a circuit like this, when the switch is open, the current can only go through the output. So the output is on. And when the switch is closed, then the current can go through the switch, so the output is off. This is called a NOT gate. You can use these logic circuits to do simple tasks for you. For example, if you want to add two numbers together, you can use the binary counting system, which only uses a zero and a one, which is useful because switches can only be in two states, on or off. So zero add zero is zero, zero add one is one, one add zero is one, and one add one is two. But remember, we've only got two states, zero and one. So instead, we need to have a placeholder or a or a place value to hold the two and a place value to hold the one. So we've got a one here and a zero in the ones column. So this makes two and zero ones, which is two. And we also need to do the same with all of these. So this becomes zero one, this becomes zero one, and this becomes zero zero. So when we add two one digit binary numbers together, we end up with a two digit binary number. And we're gonna call this one value here, the sum, and we're going to call this zero value next to it the carry. So these two are being concatenated, meaning they're joined together. If you put all these in a table, you can easily see what's going on here. C is on when A and B is on. So C is just A and B. But S is a little bit trickier because S is on when A or B is on. So S equals A or B, but not when A and B is on. So we need an and, not a and B. So to turn these into circuits, we just need to use these logic gates instead of using words. So C is easy because C is just A and B. But for S, we need this AND gate here and we want an A or a B and then we want a NOT gate and then an A and a B. Lastly, we can connect all the A's together into one circuit just so that they're not repeating. So we can jump over the B there, and then we can connect all the Bs together. And this is a binary half adder, which adds two one-digit binary numbers together. Why? You idiot. Just use your fingers. No, but you see, when you put loads of these together, you can do really big calculations. You can add, you can divide, you can multiply, you can subtract. This creates an arithmetic logic unit, which basically does calculations for us. Then we found this rock that started vibrating really aggressively when we put current through it. So basically, we hooked it up to this arithmetic logic unit to send pulses billions of times a second to perform billions of calculations per second. Then we found another rock that starts glowing when you put current through it, so we arranged 
thousands of them into a grid here, and we call this a screen. Then when you give the ALU and the clock some storage and then connect them all together, you create a CPU or a central processing unit. This does all the thinking for the computer. Then if you hook up a keyboard, you get a computer. Hey, don't eat the computer, it's not food. I'm hungry. Were you even listening? Yes, yes, glowing rock. <sighs> Look. What the f-